Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Today I'm going to give you a full walkthrough tour on the all new 2022 Airstream Atlas Tommy Bahama Edition. The Airstream Atlas is built on the Mercedes-Benz 3500 series chassis with 170 inch wheelbase. The motorhome is 24 feet 9 inches long, it's 7 feet 9 inches wide, and it's 10 feet 6 inches tall, giving you interior headroom of 6 foot 6 and a half inches. The Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel Bluetech engine gives you 188 horsepower and gets between 16 and 18 miles per gallon. The Airstream Atlas debuted in 2018 and it's been extremely popular ever since. The MSRP on the Tommy Bahama edition for 2022 is 270,394. It is equipped as a 60,000 BTU on-demand water heater, 15,000 BTU ducted air conditioning system, a 16,000 BTU force head air propane furnace, and for the water tanks, it has a 20 gallon fresh water tank, 31 gallon gray waste tank, and a 27 gallon black waste tank. What's great about the Airstream Atlas is that it comes standard with everything. Your only choice is whether you want the Tommy Bahama Edition or one of the four interior standard decors. Another great thing about an Airstream Atlas that a lot of people overlook is the body construction. When you look at an Airstream Atlas, there is no rubber transition seams. A typical Class C or B plus motorhome would have a cab area with a seam here, another partition here with another piece of plastic or rubber, and then a sidewall. If you look at the Airstream Atlas, Airstream has a tremendous amount of time and money put into the quality and craftsmanship of the body. It's all seamed together, even on the top where the, ca the roof meets the cab area and the partition here and going all the way back to the rear cap. There's a beautiful paint job here. This is the Mercedes-Benz paint, same quality Mercedes-Benz paint that they put on the Sprinter with 11 coats of clear coat and there's no cut lines between the paint here and the paint here and this paint. It's all smooth so it's going to last a very long time and look beautiful like this for years to come. If you look up, the Airstream has a beautiful sunbrella awning material and has lights within the awning. The awning has three arms, so it's very stable, and it has a seismic sensor, which will pull it back in if it shakes too much. If you look down below, there's ground lights that you could turn on to illuminate the ground area at night. There's also a porch light on the side, and it has a lighted grab handle. So all these lights are in different controls, so you could choose which ones you want on, which ones you want off. This step here is an aluminum bifold step, very deep treads. And when you open the entry door, you could have the step where you could have it on hold. So a hold feature, which will keep the step out when you're at the campground. So if you're in and out all day, you don't have to wait for the step to come in and out. But I just turned the hold off. So now when I close the door, the step is gonna roll up and then it's gonna roll all the way in, and when it's in, it's completely flush with the body, giving you beautiful style lines. You don't have to worry about the treads of the steps getting sand and dirt and grime on them because they're really protected when they're in. The entry door here is aluminum. It's made out of aluminum, and the body is fiberglass, so they're two separate components, but they're all seamed and bonded together. On the back of the entry door, it's got aluminum cladding. This also has EcoBat insulation throughout. So the floor is insulated, the walls, the doors, the back cap, the ceiling, and the overhead cab area is fully insulated. In the entry door, we have a shade here to give you uh, privacy and not allow light through and it has a lock and a deadbolt and the a deadbolt is operated off the key fob. There's also a retractable screen here at the entry door, which is really nice because it tucks completely out of the way when you don't need it. And it has woven vinyl flooring throughout. So there's gonna be a different style floor that you get when you get the Tommy Bahama versus the modern Grige, refined brown, luxe white, and formal black. Those are the different interior decors that are available. Let's jump inside. Before we do that, let's take a highlight here of the grip tape that is here at the entry door. On your way out, this will prevent you from slipping. 
There's a fire extinguisher right here at the entry door. There's also a grab handle to get in. All the cabinetry is plywood with laminate. There's no particle board or any sticker wrap in any of the construction of the Airstream Atlas. There's also uh, extruded aluminum corner rails here to protect the plywood seams. So instead of a rubber transition, which is common in the industry, they give you something that's a little bit more resilient. Down here on the floor, there is an aisle light and then there's a furnace duct for the Forsett Air 16,000 B2 propane furnace. Over here is a temperature sensor for the air conditioning. You could also turn on and off the battery system from the entry door. This has two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that are 12 volt in parallel. It also has a total of 400 watts of solar on the roof. There's 300 watts of solar for the back coach batteries, and there's a 100 watt panel for the engine battery, two separate battery systems. All right, come on in. I want to give you a lay of the land so you understand where everything is in this motorhome. Then I'm going to go in a little bit more detail on how everything works. If you look up front here, there is a table that's removable, and the driver and passenger chairs are on swivels. Over here we have a credenza with a powered TV that comes up. These shades are powered and has awning style window. On the Tommy Bahama edition you get this really cool liquor cabinet. On this side there's a sofa that's powered that folds flat if you want to take a nap. It also has power foot pedestals. This wall here folds down and there's a 72 by 72 Murphy bed. Moving back, there's a galley kitchen with a two burner cooktop, lots of storage and a deep sink. The compressor style refrigerator and convection microwave over here. There's a slide out pantry as well. And then the whole back section is a bathroom with a wall of wardrobes, a sink, a large shower and a toilet area and even plenty of privacy. Let's dive into the cab area. If you look Driver and passenger chairs will swivel. The chairs are power seats. So you have memory position one, two, and three. So you have one and two drivers you can have your memory position for. And the third one, you could program it to the exact position you need for the seat to be able to swivel without scraping the door. The table is removable. And when you are ready to remove the table, you step on a little button on the floor and the leg comes right out. And then you could put that table here as well. And they spin around to get different positions. Airstream has a lot of attention to detail. They give you this carrying case that you could store both tables and both legs in that prevents them from rattling and making noise while you're driving. There's also another case for the cab window blinds. So when you're parked, and you don't want the sun to come in to heat up the van. These are insulated. They allow you plenty of privacy and they have magnets built into them, that magnet right up to the side windows and then you use your sun visors to hold the front ones up. And when you're done using, you fold them right up and they go into this case and store away nice and neat. Up here in the cab area, let's talk about the seats. Airstream adds ultra leather on them and they increase the foam capacity so it's no longer a cargo van seat it's a very comfortable passenger seat these also slide out and there's multiple adjustments on the door here you can adjust the backrest you can adjust the height here you can even adjust the armrest and then in the front cab area has a large 10 inch navigation screen has a driving camera so this will stay on the whole entire time you're driving so you can see who's behind you. You have very large side mirrors. This has a collision avoidance system built into it and also has adaptive cruise control. Airstream, what they do is they check off all the boxes when they buy these Mercedes Sprinter van chassis. Now there's not as many options available on a cutaway chassis as there is a complete van, but Airstream gets the most they possibly can. One of the biggest features they get which greatly enhances ride experience is the 
VB air ride suspension. So it has an automatic air suspension built in which adjusts the ride and gives you ultimate comfort and a much quieter and smoother ride. You could all, it's automatic, but you could also manually control it. And that control sits right here behind the driver's chair. Up top here, you have a shelf for storage. You have mirrors in the visors. There's USB port that connects to this Bluetooth stereo. So this stereo is the one that you'll use when you're camping. We don't have the engine and the cab on. You could use this upper stereo. When you're driving, you could use the lower stereo. And for safety, there's side airbags, driver and passenger airbags as well. Over the cab area, there's a storage and you, it's pre-wired for a lot of different things. So it has HDMI if you want to add a Blu-ray player, has coax cable, and it also has a pre-wire for the Airstream connected. So Airstream has a plan with AT&T that you'd add their PetWave router, and there's already pre-wired an antenna on the roof, and you could have mobile internet. Uh, that is available through our parts department aftermarket. On this side, they give you some prep if you decided that you wanted to do satellite television, they give you the satellite hookup. There's also an inverter circuit for the 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that comes standard. And this light up top here just illuminates this cabinet so you can see what you're grabbing. And on the Tommy Bahama edition, they have these slider doors here and the logo of the Tommy Bahama. This also has Resonato speakers built in, which are extremely nice sounding speakers that Airstream puts in. There's a storage pocket here, and in this pocket I have the remote control for these side shades that Airstream has on the Tommy Bahama Edition. So on the non-Tommy Bahama Edition, we'll have power pleated shades. This has blinds, so I could bring the blinds up or down using this remote control. I could also tilt them and I can pause wherever I want to pause. And if you look at the walls here, these curtain valances are built in using a magic suede. Really boxes it in, gives you ultimate privacy. And the awning windows just crank right out, so you have plenty of ventilation. Now, let's put this t television up. On the side here, there's a switch. It says TV lift up. I'm gonna push the button, and that lifts the television up. And the TV has its own speaker built into the top of it, giving you ultimate sound quality. And this is a solid surface countertop, and it's also lit underneath. Up above, we have the overhead roof locker with curved doors. Inside is a mat that allows it to be quiet, so whatever you put in here, when it moves around when you're driving, you're not gonna hear it. And it also has an extruded aluminum structure here on the bottom. Uh, that is very, very durable for years to come. The ceiling is aluminum, just like the Airstream travel trailers, and it has ducted air conditioning. So there's ductwork throughout. You could spin around, you could pause some. It also has intake rates where the air filters are for the air conditioning. This is a power skylight. It has an insect screen as well as a privacy shade, and those are manual and they're controlled by the whole system control here on the wall. So there's a lot of different things you could do here. If you want to turn on all the lights on and off, you could do that right here. You could also have them set to low dim or cinema mode, which will dark them down while you're watching TV. You could bring the awning, the power awning in and out from here, and you could also adjust your temperature. So right now, we have it set to 71 degrees, but the interior temperature is 66 degrees. I could also monitor my fresh water tank, my gray waste with this sink and shower, the black waste, which is toilet, and the propane, which happens to be about a 40 pound propane cylinder underneath. I could also turn on and off the tank heaters. There's 12 volt heat pads underneath that protect the tanks from freezing, gives you about a seven to 10 degree boost in temperature inside the tank. And then there's an auto fill mode that allows you when you're hooked up the city water connection to fill the fresh water tank without disconnecting the hose. And you could turn the water pump on and off from here. It has a 3.2 liter diesel generator and it's a quiet diesel generator. You could start and stop it from here. You could also have it auto start if the batteries got low in the coach. You could also manage your house and chassis battery voltage from here. 
And then you could go, you could toggle through different modes here. This is the lighting mode. You could individually turn on and off things like we talked about the undercarriage and the handle. Anything with up and down allows you to dim. So you could dim and brighten certain items here. On this piece here, you could, you could set up the automatic start for the generator, quiet times. And then this is your temper control. So you could control the air conditioning, the heat pump, the furnace, and you could put it on auto mode. This here allows you to operate power items like the TV lift, the skylight, the awning, as well as the slide out. Right now I'm gonna do the skylight. So all I have to do is hit open. And the skylight opens all the way up. Now this is not something that you would want to have open or leave open when you're driving, but it is something once you're parked and you're with the coach that you could leave open and put your insect screen across. Now let's talk about this slide out. In order to bring the slide in and out, which it happens to be out right now, you cannot have this table here. So we gotta remove the table and the leg. All right, and then we want to make sure this aisle is clear. What's nice about what Airstream did is this slide, when it's in, you could still walk through and you could still fold the bed down. It does not interfere with anything. So you have the choice whether you want the slide in or out. Now, whenever you bring the slide in or out, you want to make sure you have a window or door open. I have the driver and passenger doors that allows the air to equal. So let's bring this uh, slide in. It's nice and smooth, it's quiet enough. I wouldn't recommend having anybody sit on this when you're bringing the slide in and out. And this sofa, by the way, has four, uh, two seat belts. So there's a total of four seat belts on board so you can carry up to four people. And the carrying capacity is just under a thousand pounds. So you can put a thousand pounds of cargo, water, and passengers inside this motorhome. So now the slide's in, you can see how much room you have and just know that when the bed folds down, it'll come up to right about here, but it's still usable. Bring the slide back out. You always wanna check your surroundings. Make sure that a car hasn't pulled up next to you. Make sure you're not putting it out into a tree. You wanna make sure you're somewhat level too before you put your slide out. And it also is recommended to have your stabilizer jacks down. So you would level the motor home using leveling blocks and once you're somewhat level, you wanna stabilize it so it doesn't rock around when you're moving inside. This has stabilizer jacks. They're in this cabinet here. So I could bring the jacks down. You have to first turn them on and then you could extend them. And the jacks will come down, touch the ground and stop. And they're not meant to level or lift the motor home up. Next to this jack control, we have the battery heater. So this has tank heaters to heat the tanks when it's cold. This also has battery heaters. So these lithium iron phosphate batteries need to be heated when it's below a certain temperature threshold so they could take on a charge. So you could just turn the tank heaters on and leave them on when it's cold weather. If you wanna charge it when, by plugging it to shore power, starting the engine, the generator, or leaving it out in the sun. Next to that, we have the battery monitor. Now everything in here communicates with everything in here. This is the behind the scenes type things, but you could also start the generator from here, bring the slide in and out. You could really fine tune and change the inverter settings that are on board. And then it also has a, a power control system that allows you to control whether you have 30 amp coming in or 15 amp or 20 amp electrical. On a 15 amp electrical, it's good for charging and maybe using the microwave, but it would not necessarily work if you want to operate the air conditioning. You'd either have to start your generator or be plugged into a 30 amp campground connection. And then you also have the sea level two tank monitoring system built in here. And all the cabinets shut using these J latches, which keeps them secure. This is not a locking mechanism. It's just a flush mounted handle. And then if you pop this off and take this plate off, this is where the inverter, the Victron solar controller, a lot of the electronic components that you really don't need access to are hidden back here. There's also fans in there. Now let's go over the bed operation. Before we do that, let me show you these power foot pedestals. So there's a switch here. 
and lift it up. So this one and that one will lift all the way up and you can adjust and then you could move the backrest to get your comfort level. To operate the bed, these have to be put down first. So you put them down. And then what you have to do is remove the armrest on both sides. <clears throat> and then fold the bed down. The seat belts are already tucked away, but you might want to tuck them away when you bring the bed down. Then there's a release here on the side that you pull, and then you pull this handle, and the whole entire bed platform comes down. And you can see it's a regular mattress, and it's strapped in so the mattress doesn't slide when you fold it up. When you lift up the mattress, it has these, uh, oh, it gives you a little bit more comfort, but allows air to flow underneath the mattress to allow it to dry out. At 72 by 72, you put your pillows up here, and then there's little lights here as well. So you could turn this reading light on and adjust it. There's USB charge ports. There's pockets in the wall. There's warm motorized shades, two more windows that open, and you have lights above this area. And you can leave this bed down the whole entire day if you want, whether it slides in or out, that's up to you. Most people wind up tucking the bed away when they're done using it so they have more living space. And it's just as easy as putting it down because it's counterweighted. And fold the bed back up. While that's going up, this here lifts up and you have additional storage below the sofa. So you could put the table and the legs under there if you'd like. Behind the driver's seat, there's also an inverter circuit and there's also more controls, same controls that you have elsewhere, but ne right next to the bed so they're easy to reach and there's two different pages of information that you could go through. Let's move back a little bit. If you look down here, you have another aisle light. You have another furnace duct. This flips down and gives you access to the fuses and breakers that are on board. So electrical breakers and their 12 volt fuses. Above that, there's a drawer. This happens to have some remote controls for additional components built in. There's also an HDMI split box here. And then below the little liquor cabinet, there's a drawer. And then this, you pull this little pin out and this spins around. Now in a non-Tommy Bahama edition, this will just be a straight counter. But it's very important to put this lock in right around this leather strap when you're driving so your liquor doesn't roll around. This refrigerator is a Novacool refrigerator, 9.1 cubic feet. Now what's nice about this refrigerator is the depth. So you can imagine you buy a pizza, a small pizza, you could fit the depth of the pizza box in here. Most RV refrigerators that are absorption style that run on propane don't have the depth that the 12 volt compressor style refrigerators have. To operate the refrigerator, just turn the dial and you select which temperature. Manufacturer recommends three to four, but it goes all the way up to seven if you wanted. And then there's a safety lock that allows the door to stay shut when you're driving down the highway. Down below is the freezer portion. It's very deep and it has the same dial control for temperature setting and a lock to keep it shut when you're driving. Below that is the venting for this cabinet. Above is the Contour 1.1 cubic foot convection microwave with air fryer built in. There's a storage compartment here that goes all the way back and the microwave, if you want to unplug it, there's a plug and an outlet in the back. Slide out pantry here with adjustable shelves to move up and down. And the kitchen area, solid surface countertop, solid surface sink cover, this is quarter inch thick, this is heavy stuff. And it has a Kohler stainless steel deep sink and a residential faucet with pull out sprayer. The blinds that are behind the kitchen are manual, so you can manually control them up and down. And it has another awning style window as well. You could put your trash here, or you could put compost or whatever items you want in this bin. Behind here gives you access to the tankless water heater if it never needed service, so it's dual purpose. And then it has another touchscreen control so you can monitor your tanks and some of your lights here as well. 
The design on the wall is unique to the Tommy Bahama edition. There's an overhead roof locker here, also lined as well. Two burner cooktop here with uh, spark ignition. Dr this folds down so you can put your sponge here. This drawer comes all the way out. These are full extension. There's a door here that opens. You can put pots and pans. Has a propane leak detector down here by the floor. Now look on the side of the sofa. It even has USB ports on both sides so you could charge your devices. Another aisle light here on the floor. Another drawer bank. And the silverware goes here. This one comes out all the way. And while you're prepping, there's extra space here on the side. If you look up, there is a fantastic fan in the kitchen area. There's also one in the bathroom area, but this has variable speed control. You can turn the fan on and off from here. It has a motorized lid, manual control for lid if you decide to, and also has a thermostat. You could pull this down if you want to pop the screen off to clean the fan blades or the screen periodically. Let's go into the bathroom area now. I want to show you again the pocket door here. It has a lock system that keeps it locked in place when you're driving, so you don't have to worry about it coming across. And on the back side, it has a mirror and also a toilet paper holder on the back of the door. Huge wardrobe area here. The bottom portion below the wardrobe is an access panel that pops off if they need to get to the heating system. You got a drawer here and here. You got a big door here. And this allows me to show you a lot of the stuff. You get a lot of extras when it comes to the Tommy Bahama edition. You get sheets, a comforter, towels, special pillows that come with it. On this side, there's the bed pillows in here and some special Tommy Bahama towels. These are lighted compartments. And what's nice about it, this bottom one here lifts up. And this is accessible from the outside. So when we go outside, we'll see. But you can remove the shelf if you're gonna load taller items into this compartment here. Above the sink, there's a medicine cabinet. Plenty of storage here. Residential faucet, solid surface countertop, deep color sink. Below the sink, there is access for additional storage. You can see those aisle lights light up automatically when they see motion. Next to that, we have the GFCI protected electrical outlet. They give you a little ice bucket on the Tommy Bahama edition. And then over here on the wall is the control for the suburban on-demand water heater and another touch screen to monitor your tanks lights and other items. On this side is the shower. This is a pretty large shower. I'll just step in. I'm five feet nine inches tall and you can see there's plenty of room above my head. There's also plenty of room for me to move my arms and wash my body while I'm in here. And it is absolutely beautiful and elegant. The pocket that they put in here, the wood that they used, the materials they used, the top is all aluminum so it's easy to wipe down, easy to caulk and maintain and clean. And then the doors themselves close nice and tight and there's a large lip here that prevents water from coming out. When you're driving there's a latch that you pop in to keep the doors in place. There's also ductwork for the air conditioning back here. Uh, the other fantastic fan I mentioned, storage above the toilet, so you can put a lot of extra toiletries in here. A towel bar behind the toilet, aluminum wall here, so it's really easy to clean, no fabrics or wood. And then the toilet is a Thetford toilet, and it also has a separate sprayer. So you could flush the toilet using the foot pedal, put it on partially to fill a bowl, and then to clean it, you could spray it right here. And that just hangs right up here behind the toilet. Let's jump outside. I got a lot to show you still. Over here is a compartment. They can store a lot of items in. It's carpeted. It's also lit. I just have it disabled right now. There's electrical outlet here. There's cable, HDMI, and USB built in. And what's nice about these compartments, they operate off the key fobs. When you lock your doors, it locks your compartments. There's another pocket back here too for additional items. And then the gas strut keeps it open. Look at the clean lines. 
There's no handles or any latches that are going to get all gunked up when you're driving. Uh, very easy to clean and wax and maintain this motor. Exhaust here for the engine. These are the Tommy Bahama chairs that come with this motorhome. In that compartment was the little pouches that they zip into. But these are nice camp chairs that tuck away nice and tight. Even has a bottle opener built into it for your beverages. Bottle opener here on the Tommy Bahama cooler that comes with it. Dual rear wheels has Alcoa aluminum rims. The valve stems are right here, very easy to check your tire pressure to increase tire, pre uh, tire pressure. Has mud flaps behind the tires. Looking up, there's the porch light. And remember these windows when we opened them inside? There's no gaskets. It's a frameless window, so it gives you very clean lines and clean look. This is the Suburban Propane Furnace Exhaust. This compartment here is for the generator, so there's a little latch I have to undo and then lock it in right here. And then I have access to the generator for maintenance, but you could start and stop it from inside the coach. Back here is a storage compartment. It's lit as well for additional items. Has the motion sensor lights built into it. And then below that is a propane quick disconnect. So if you want an outside grill, you can buy a low pressure grill and you could plug in the line and turn the gas on and then you could do some grilling outside. Above that is a storage compartment which is lockable with a key. There's aluminum structure here. This opens up, it's lit as well, and it has the propane line we talked about. And also a short power cord, which is nice. This, is, this comes with a 25 foot power cord that is 30 amp. But if you want to plug it in at home to charge it, you could use this short one and put a regular extension cord on the end. This is cedar line, just like the wardrobe. And if you look all the way up, this is the floor that lifts up from the inside if you want to put taller items in there. Beautiful medallion that comes with the Tommy Bahama edition. It's aluminum medallion, painted, hand painted. These taillights are able to pop out so you could do maintenance and change your bulbs. If you look here, you can see it's all aluminum structure on the inside. The back cap is separated from the insulated back wall. And this just magnets shut. Beautiful rear cap on the motorhome, following the style lines that Mercedes developed when they built the Sprinter van. Has an integrated license plate here that sits in this pocket that's lit with four bolts to keep it tight against the body. This here pops off, and this is where the hitch receiver is, and this motorhome could tow up to 5,000 pounds. Above the hitch, there's sensors here for the Proctronic system. And if you look up top, you'll see the, the camera that's integrated there for your driving camera. On this side, you have your hookups for the campground. This is the driver's side or road side of the coach. Down here, we have a macerator. So you can pull this out. You can put it through this little pocket or pull it straight out. You would use a donut at a campground or screw this into the fitting. Turn this to open it once it's out. Then up here, you're gonna start with the black tank and open the wastegate. Then you're gonna turn the waste pump on. And that will help discharge the waste. When you're done, you're gonna close the valve. Then you're gonna open up the gray tank. Turn the pump back on and allow it to pump the waste through this little tube. The gray waste is soapy shower water, so that'll help clean out your waste tube so when you put it away, there's no waste in it still. And make sure you close the valve when you're done. When you're all done, make sure you close this so no residual waste comes out. And then we're gonna hit the real retract button and bring it in. 
Next to that is a black tank flush. After you gravity drain the black periodically for maintenance, you could hook a garden hose up to this connection here, and that will spray the walls of the tank down. You turn on your macerator pump, and that'll help discharge all that waste and any residual waste. Below that is a propane hookup. So this is allows the propane filling station to fill up your propane here. You could turn the propane on and off using the electronic solenoid, and there's a bleeder valve next to it. This is the outside utility shower with hot and cold water, hot and cold, and you can hang the wand up on this holder here off to the side. And then you have your city water connection with the water pressure regulator built into it. You could bring a, a hose up through here, hook up, if you get high water pressure at the campground, you don't have to worry. You're already protected for your whole entire coach. And these doors snap down and completely close off so you don't have to worry about bugs or rodents getting in these compartments. Back here is the power cord connection. This is the smart plug. You just squeeze these and unplug the cord. Another trap door to bring the cord through neatly. You also have cable inlet if you go to a campground and want to use their cable. And we also have the fresh water valve. So there's a city water connection on this side that you could supply water to all your plumbing with the campground's water pressure. If you want to take some water from there and, and fill up your fresh water tank, you could open this valve here and that will allow you to fill up some of your fresh water tank on board without disconnecting the hose and putting it somewhere else. This here is the generator exhaust. This is the on-demand water heater vent and intake. This is the slide out that we have out. You can notice it's painted to match the body and nicely finished. These are the compartments that come out with the slide. And they're all lit and carpeted and lock off the key fob. Above the slide, there's a slide out topper. So when the slide's out, leaves and debris that might fall down on top or heavy water. When you bring the slide in, whatever's sitting in that roof piece would come in with the slide. The slide topper protects it so you're not bringing in dirt and debris when you bring the slide in each time. Over here, we have the fuel fill for the 24 and a half gallon fuel tank, ultra low cell for diesel fuel. There is a fuse panel here below the driver's seat. On this side, if you take the floor up, is the engine battery. It has auto headlights, tilt wheel. The pocket here in the door has a first aid kit built in and emergency light. Now you can see the pad, extra details. Airstream has this pad here at the door for your arm when you're driving. These are also emergency exit doors. There's a heavy handle to get in the coach, nice and easy, right on the door. And then the heated seats, power door locks, and the memory power seats are here. Hood release is off to the side. And then when you open the door, look above. There's a light there that illuminates this whole entire area so you can see what you're stepping out in. And the mirrors have these side view cameras built into them and they're breakaway mirrors, so if you hit something, they won't break, they'll fold right into the body. And it's nice to tuck them away when you're parking. There's a step built into the front bumper, which allows you to get up to the windshield to clean it. Very important to clean the sensors and the cameras that are in front of the vehicle. If you get bugs on top of them, it will alert you to let you know the camera system's been disabled. When you lift the hood up, you can lock it in place. Gives you access for easy maintenance. There's manual valves for air suspension. So if you had some type of failure with the system and needed to pump the rear air suspension up, you could do it manually here. You got your washer fluid, master cylinder. You could jump start the engine using a positive and negative leads here. Oil filter, air filter, oil fill. If you notice, there's no dipstick for the oil. You can monitor the oil right from the cab area and you can see your levels. That fluid gets filled here. This also has the high performance LED headlights on board. Fog lights are integrated and then it has this extra chin here with the Airstream logo built in. 
This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. You can visit us on the web at colonialairstream.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. See you soon.